Hello, um, welcome, Merry Christmas. Um, yeah, so I have literally just finished watching Doctor Who, and as promised, I am giving you a quick immediate thoughts review. Uh, my immediate thoughts are I don't know what my immediate thoughts are. So whilst I try and gather them, we do have the we do have the final day of my pony advent calendar, which, as promised, I will open today and um, see what we get. Which hopefully probably says Merry Christmas or Happy Hearthwarming. Oh, there you go. It's our it's our girl saying Merry Christmas. So we're matching the uh, main pattern on the box. And uh, I'm guessing it'll be a long one. Oh, uh, well, does not want to break. Uh, so how your Christmas has been? Um, mine's been quiet, but that's okay. Uh, it's uh, a longish shape. I'm thinking some kind of uh, possibly a full sleigh, or maybe some sort of star whoosh. Happy Christmas! Thing, I don't know. Ah, oh, there we go. It is. It is a uh, sleigh with being pulled by a reindeer. We'll just assume it's Rudolph. Um, yeah, very cool. Although that maybe should have been the one for Christmas Eve, because if, you, if you're getting it today on Christmas morning, that means Santa was late. And the um, the picture on the inside is all the girl, uh, fluff. So who's missing then? So you've got Twine. So Dashie's missing. You've got Twine, Pinky there, and everyone else. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll do the thing I've been looking forward to doing as well. I'll open this up. Uh, meanwhile, um, presents. I've only had a couple so far. Um, so that's what the plastic looks like when you take it out. All individual foil wraps. Um, I got an Amazon voucher from himself of £100, which is very good. I might buy some... There's some Steven Universe uh, comics I've had my eye on for a while. Um, so I'll probably start with those and then have a look what else is available that it piques my interest. Which way is the seam? Where's the seam? Uh, I'll do it from that side. And um, Adam got me the most amazing thing. Um, look! It's Sherlock! And he's so squishy! He's so squishy! Um, so I love my Sherlock cushion. Kind of a private joke there. Um, so my sister's birthday is in October, and when I went to see her, I was like, um, do you, "Okay, because I've been brassic for a while." And I said to her, "Do you want me to, you know, bring some other YouTube and one you thing?" You know, uh, I listed a couple of things, and the third item I listed was a silly one, which was a banana-shaped cushion. And then when Adam said he'd bought me a present, I said, "Oh, it's not a banana-shaped cushion, is it?" So I kept making a joke with him about you know, having a banana, <laughs> banana-shaped cushion, and. Um, he kept sort of smiling at me about it, but uh, obviously it wasn't banana shape, but it is a cushion! So I've got a friend for Modest now, so he can sort of sit there and uh, there he is! And be there. So um, opened it up and that's actually really pretty. Got all the girls um, on display here, and obviously the reverses for those. I um, don't know what I'm going to do with that, but... Um, that is, yeah, that's kind of cool. Might cut them out and just use them as tags or, or do something with them. Um, looks like AJ Pinky gets a good showing. A couple of rarities, there's some dashies. Yeah, they probably would get a good show. It looks like there's a lot of AJ. Or maybe it's just because the orange sticks out more against all the pink. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's what it looks like when you open it up. Because that was something that needed to be done. I'm going to take my jumper off because I'm really warm, excuse me. Oh. That's better. Ah. Hello. Um, yeah, oh I also got big fluffy as ever! Work! And they are really as soft and fluffy as they look. <laughs> they are amazing. Um, so yeah, that's... Ah, um, oh, there it is. That is so far. Oh, and I got a poster from my sister. Um, so I'll open it out and show you. Some of you may recognise it for what it is, and some of you might go, who? Um, I recognise it almost straight away himself as well, wasn't it? So we're going to have to frame it and pop it up. 
Uh, what? Yay. Um, she did, oh, I've just, I have spoken to my family today and she did say, oh, she wish she kind of got a bigger one. And I said, no, it's fine. I'm happy with this size. It's not over, over too much. I can easily get a frame for it. It's uh, the same size as that. So I know I'd get one of those. And obviously it's gonna go behind the telly. So that's the present so far. I'm uh, seeing the fam hopefully on Friday. Uh, my aunt's been in the hospital with gallstones, so they're visiting her because she's in Brighton. But at some point before New Year, I will be seeing my fam. And then, yeah, I'll have more prizzies. But I'm happy with today's haul. Today's good. Today's been good. Um, so, Doctor Who. I liked it. Um, yeah, I think this could... I have a lot of affection for the Five Doctors. That was kind of my first multi-doctor story growing up. Um, and obviously the Five-ish Doctors is amazing. Um, you know, I still haven't actually seen the Three Doctors. And I've, I've got a copy, I just haven't sat and watched it yet. So I can't really sort of compare that one. But of the ones I've seen, obviously I've seen the Two Doctors. I like it. I think it could be my new favourite multi-doctor story. Um, I liked... Uh, I can't remember the day of the Doctor, the, the 50th anniversary episode with them, um, uh, 10 and 11. Um, I like that one, but this one, because that one was kind of part of an ongoing story, they're trying to they have so much other stuff going on, and the, the Zygons and everything. Um, I like it. I'll probably I will certainly watch it. But yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, it's uh, it was okay. It didn't feel this felt more cohesive. It didn't. It wasn't like it was trying too hard to be this big, special, flashy thing. Um, but this one was. It was a much, much smaller story. Excuse me. Mm. It was a much um, smaller story. Um, a l way fewer characters. Um, but yeah, I, I liked it. If you've good send off for Capaldi. If you're kind of on the fence, if you're not enjoying Capoy's work, then I don't think necessarily this is going to um, bring you back over. But for me, it was a good, solid story. Uh, that being said, spoilers! Yeah, that's my that's my spoiler pose. Um, so yeah, it's a very small cast. It is Capaldi, Bradley is the first Doctor, Mark Gatiss, Parmaki, and then a couple of secondary you know the other characters and but basically it is it is that small cast um Gattis is playing the captain um and it is significant that we we only know him as the captain throughout um and obviously Pearl Mackey is playing Bill of a kind so I don't want to stop that spoiler too fast, but yeah, the, there's a lot of thing about oh, Pearl Mackey's coming back, and th th should it be, and is she, <coughs> is she still playing Bill? Should she be coming back after her, you know, great sacrificial death? And that is actually handled very well, and not necessarily in the way you think it might be. Um, so don't worry, it's actually good. Um, Mark Gatiss obviously is very good in his role. Um, Uh, both Doctors are, are obviously well done. Um, David Bradley, I don't know if it's... Okay, so the first Doctor is also regenerating. There's um, It opens with the final scene. It's really neat, actually. It opens with the final scenes from the 10th Planet, which again, I haven't seen. I can't remember if it's actually available yet. I've got an Amazon voucher. Maybe I can fill in my gaps. Um, it opens with the ending of the 10th Planet with... Um, one regenerating into two, i.e. like the mid, mid moments literally beforehand with Ben and Polly. Um, can't really speak to the actors playing Ben and Polly because I haven't really watched many of their episodes and they were literally there for the cameo. So it opens with that and it so it's on the small screen and it comes you know, small screen black and white but it expands out, goes full screen, becomes colour and then they transition um, damn it, Will Hartnell into David Bradley. So that's very clever. So that's your opening. And then um, they do a very neat thing where when 12 meets him, 
which is obviously the, the bit you see at the end of the episode 12 comments on oh you're regenerating you can see it in your face you're going weird and I don't know what accent that was <laughs> um, so it, it you see his face it cuts to his face and it goes kind of this weird greeny thing and then goes back to normal flesh tone um, normal for him and you think oh well that's kind of covering up the fact it's a different actor but then it cuts to Capaldi and his face does the same thing where it goes green and then pink again and it's like Oh, that's, so it's a weird regeneration thing, and they're talking, um, having a bit of bants. Um, there's a, a great um, part where Twelve is calling um, one out on his sexist bullshit. Uh, like, several points in the episode, he's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> Please don't, stop stop talking like that. Nope, nope, just stop talking like that. Um, so that's quite fun. Like, he's sort of... So that, that, yeah, it's a little outdated and he is sort of, so he's very self-aware. It takes a little while for one to accept 12 as himself. Um, but yeah, it, 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 so it does all that and it's um, a really cool opening. So that's kind of, the, and then you got the bit with Mark Gattis's character comes around the corner and says, um, hello, is one of you a doctor? And like, are you trying to be funny? I'll work on that. I can do a Scottish accent, I just can't get my head in it at the moment. And then we have the credits, which... I'm still not as keen on it. I've been recently watching a lot of the Eleventh Doctor stories and um, that the, that sequence I like more just the simple vortex effects but I know it was based on a fan video so you know kudos to the fan but like, it never really worked for me um, and then we cut back to the Ypres it's World War One obviously um, 1914 and that's when we meet the captain in his context and he's in a crater pointing a gun at a German officer and he's saying look I don't really want to kill you if I do it would be in self-defense and I also accept the fact if you killed me it would be in your self-defense and you're kind of having a moment and he said I also wish you could speak English and the guy starts speaking German and said or I could understand German so he's really kind of caught in this moment where you know it, it, you know, he's, it really is life and death moment um, and then there's a time freeze because before then you've got the two doctors and the snow freezes and it's really cool there's actually at one point um, 12 hits a snowflake and it kind of bounces back because it's just, it's not frozen it's literally time has frozen so trying to move it away and it just sort of bounces so that was a really cool effect um, so you see Gattis is the captain um, sort of taken um, out of time there's this glass figure figure that appears to him and you see him going to go through a whirly thing like in a seat and he's like spewed out at the wrong place because the um, you hear a female voice going um time error time you know for fault in the timeline so it's it, like it's gone wrong and he gets spat back out where the doctors are and that's where he meets them because they're in the south pole so <laughs> They actually, sorry, when they're doing the, the um, bit at the beginning, they actually do say 709 episodes to go, which I thought was quite cute. Um, so yeah, that's kind of our setup. It, that's how um, the World War One soldier gets to the South Pole with these two doctors. And then yeah, so there's a lot of back and forth between the doc two doctors. Um, one calls Twelve his nurse. And it's like, oh, I know, I know, you don't you think because he's a man. Um, there is a couple of moments where one and the captain are being kind of sexist together and next to um bill and she's like oh you reckon it's like, oh yes because all women are like glass aren't they and i said yeah i know and i've been with the fairer sex and they're like good gracious so yeah uh, one and the captain are kind of bonding over their um sexism <laughs> because they are of their times not necessarily a good thing and i think that he's set up to de deliberately mock it but that being said um outside of one keep calling um, Bill. Oh, you, you, well done. Yes, good, you, good dear. You, you, you take care of that. Oh, yeah. You, you've, you've obviously missed him because you've, um, you know, the place is dusty. This is, he's kept making jokes about Twelve's Tardis being dusty and not liking the new look of it. But um, yeah, the interactions are really good. I mean, aside from his one's kind of tradition, you know, old, old-fashioned sexism, he does get on well enough with Bill. There's not like there's antagonism between them. <coughs> so they they go to the place called the testimony that's the, the the new aliens in this and they are basically from the far far future and collect um beings from the moment of their death 
like just moments before do the Wally scan thing on them which we don't know what it is yet and then puts them back just before they die and he's like well why are you doing this what's going on or well, I'll find out and if I don't like it I'll stop you and um, this is 12 obviously saying that and they use um so they use Bill as a bargaining chip and there is a moment where the captain comes out and says look are you saying that you would give sorry are you saying you would give this lady's you know give up this lady um in exchange for my life I, I accept the deal and um Bill's like I don't think so uh no that's not how it works so um yeah, the captain is willing to sacrifice himself because he's already sort of prepared himself for death. Um, really, everyone gets a really nice sort of character moment scene. So, uh, obviously, there's lots of stuff between Bill and Twelve where he's like, you're almost perfect, but you're not Bill. Bill Potts died after she became a Cyberman. You know, she, she sacrificed herself for people she barely know. Do, do not insult her memory by being this. So really sort of sticking up for her, uh, which is cool. Um, Bill gets a really nice moment with the captain. Um, it does turn out she is one of the glass people. This isn't a very bad thing. So the kind of the big action scene we have is on a planet. I can't remember what they called it. A planet in the middle of the universe, and you see these like things running around, and one of them attacks the captain, and they get it off of him, and that happens. And um, he goes, "Oh, it's you know." Twelve says to one of them, "You've met these before, but you, you're not you're not recognised like this. So they've kind of come out of their shell." And you see this this huge tower in the middle of everything, and there's like something starts shooting at them, and I was like, "Scan me! I'm dying! Wouldn't you like to see that in person?" So he, he, he they establish that. Yeah, okay, fine. So um, twelve goes into the tower. One stays downstairs to keep an eye out, um, and it turns out it's Daleks because one finds um, a, a nice stalk. Oh yes, out of their shells. Very good. Um, and they're just literally the Dalek mutants just running around like big brainy spiders. This is very creepy but effective. Um, and it's Rusty from, I can't remember the name of the episode, but it's the one where the Doctor gets miniaturised and ends up running around inside him. So basically he set himself up in the... Hey, get forks. He set himself up in the middle of this place and he, um, the Doctor's just like, you know what? Help me to do this thing. And he's like, why should I help? He said, because helping me um, hurts the Daleks. He's like, all right. So he's able to connect into the Dalek hive mind and find the information the Doctor needs, which is the original Glass Girl they meet. Um, they realise she's asymmetrical. She's not just a comp computer generated image. She is a person. And it turns out that they are from like like five billion AD. They are in the far far future. And what they're doing is taking people from the point of just before the point of death scanning them, recording all their memories, putting them back, but then they can live among us again in the future. They are recording them, they're recording their lives and preserving them. And I was like, well that's not evil, I can't do anything about that, it was not evil. I was like, oh, now what am I supposed to do? Um, so they realised, okay, you're not evil, um, what do we do about this situation? And so there's, kind of, that's the basic story, they've, um, both 1 and 12 are like deciding whether or not to regenerate and 12 is like you have to regenerate, you have to become who you're meant to be. There's a there's a great line after one realises, oh so you're you're the next one. Said, well there's a few false starts but we get there eventually. Okay. <laughs> um, there was a scene previously where the testimony shows the Doctor who he is. Like both, they, they do these like really cool whirly balloon effects which have got obviously again gets like highlights from all the previous episodes. You get all the, you know, the earlier Doctor's adventures. And then Twelve's like, that's not fair, they cut out all the jokes! Which was quite funny. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, the main thing of it. And then they um, they go back and they're like, we've got to take the captain home. He's like, oh, it's funny, I, I thought he'd be home for Christmas because he's talking about his wife and his boys and, and wanting to be home and like accepting the fact that maybe he won't. And then the Doctor kind of like, Twelve, sorry, does a thing. He switches a thing. So we still we still get back to the moment because it's, it's supposed to be like a fixed point the um the captain is supposed to die in order for everything to sort of start again um you know and, and for the timeline to continue he has to be inserted back to where he was and then the, the, we get to the moment where i kind of maybe just a little bit sort of cried a tiny bit you know big strong man tears uh, no so he um 
the doctors explain that they, they'll be with him but there'll be a perception filter the glass girl explains that he won't remember um his experiences with them um so he asks if could you do me one last favorite and and one's like of course of course what do you think you want so could you look in on my family keep an eye on them and this is where we find out that he's a Lethbridge Stewart um, and he gives his full name, which I can't remember, but yeah, he's, um, he's uh, one of the, I don't know, one of the first Lethbridge Stewarts to serve in the army, but he is a Lethbridge Stewart. Um, so he's a First World War captain. I don't know how old Mark Gattis is. So I don't know if he's supposed to be our Briggs father or grandfather. I'm not sure how the timeline works there, but yeah, he does say earlier he has sons. So he's definitely the progenitor of the Lethbridge Stewart lineage. And so I was like, oh, so I was kind of like lip wobbly there. And then, if you remember, I told you there were um, Ypres in 1914. All the way through the episodes, I'm thinking, well, it's really cool. I'm quite enjoying the story, but it's not Christmas. It's not, there's nothing in it apart from the snow being in the South Pole. There would be. There isn't Christmas. And then you hear the German voices singing Silent Night and it's that day in 1914 it's Christmas Day and he said what he did is put shunted it forward a couple of hours and he's I've got my timing right and it's like yeah and it's the um it's the day of the Christmas miracle he says that you know humans you know the one day it never happened any other time any other war they decided no they put down all the guns and started singing and we get this long sequence. Um, again, the Doctors and um, Bill, the Glass Girl, whoever it is, the projection is, um, yeah, they're kind of watching it and they can't see them. They're sort of watching it and speechifying about it. It's like, oh my god. Oh, okay, you did it to me. So, yeah, it's the um, World War Two Christmas Miracle Day. Um, and I'm like, yeah, okay, all right, fair enough. Um, so, yeah, obviously... Captain Lethbridge Stewart doesn't die. Uh, doesn't seem to affect the um, the timeline too badly because he's like, well, what's a couple of extra soldiers who don't die during wartime? Um, yeah, so his him the captain and his German, you know, pointing guns at each other. They both put their weapons. He makes sure he gets the medical help he needs, and that's it. And so, yeah, Bill's appearance in the episode is as a crystal a glass girl memory facsimile and all the way through she's like she's arguing with him saying well I'm, I am of course I'm Bill Potts I'm Bill Potts' memory isn't that what we are it's just a collection of our own memories and as a leaving gift she gives him a very sweet kiss on the cheek and if you've heard the rumours yes Jenna Louise Coleman does make a appearance as as Clara and it's like suddenly the doctor remembers her again and she goes, oh, you better not remember, you better not forget me again. That was very insulting. So it's a very sweet little cameo. It doesn't overstay its welcome. Um, but yeah, the doctor now remembers um, Clara again, which is very cool. And then um, Nardle comes back and there's a big group hug. And um, yeah, so one leaves in his own TARDIS and it goes back into the end of the 10th planet where it regenerates into, um, into two. I was wondering if they were going to do the thing where they um get is it Shear Smith who played him in um Adventure Space and Time? You know, play, played played uh, Troughton. But they didn't, they just literally went back into the episode, sort of shrunk it back down to black and white. So that was kind of cute and, and very sweet. Um so you do see him so you get him regenerating and then obviously we're going back in and we're watching twelve regenerate. And he gives this really long speech, it's a really lovely speech about it, think, speaking to the doctor about being kind and, and being good and looking out and don't do this and I'm not sure if he's speaking to his past his self or his future but he says oh always remember to be kind and never eat pears and hate is you know hate is such a bad thing and it's yeah I, I, and then obviously the regeneration happens one of the biggest blasts we've had in a long time but given the fact how long he's been protracting it for at least a couple of days um, by his timeline um, yeah and then we get Jodie and she's adorable so the one thing I liked is I don't know how tall Jodie is compared to Peter but because um, we see her his their hands 
the regeneration happens through the hands. Her hands do seem to be smaller than his, and this is demonstrated where the ring he's wearing actually falls off. I thought, well, that's kind of neat. Um, and then she does see herself. She pulls the screen around, she sees her reflection, and she said, oh, brilliant. You know, and she does seem to have a northern accent. And she seems very happy um, being her. Um, and then there's a moment um, she's like, because all through the regeneration while he's doing his speech, the um, cloister bell's been going. And I don't know why it was going necessarily. But then she hits a button and all hell breaks loose and doors fly open. And before anyone makes any jokes about woman drivers, I will remind you that both 10 and 11 regenerated whilst crashing. So shush. Alright? Shush. Um, but it's a really, uh, really cool ending in the sense that the console, the whole console room kind of goes and blows on and is on fire. She's obviously trying to stop and she falls out. So the last thing she sees is a huge fire in the TARDIS as she's falling out of it and then it disappears and she's still falling. So we don't know where she is or when she is. Um, given the fact she's still within the, her, the first moments of regeneration, the fall shouldn't cause her too much damage. It's demonstrated before that, you know, in the first 24 hours, a Time Lord can, you know, do really cool healing stuff. So, But hopefully she's not falling too far. Um, but even in the moment of like, oh crap, there goes my ride, she seems kind of joyous and like, well, here's another adventure. So yeah, definitely a dramatic regeneration scene. Um, looking forward to her. Um, thoughts on it? I kind of have never had a problem with the idea of a female doctor. Um, when Peter D kind of decided to go off Twitter for a while, um, I wrote this long post to Janet Fielding saying, look, you know, I actually, what people seem to be forgetting and that I do remember is like this conversation has been happening for a long time. And Peter D's views on it have always been consistent it is in the fact that he's never liked the idea of a female doctor but he not once said anything against Jodie um but yeah that's that so I've always been kind of like well all right if we have a female doctor we have a female doctor It'd be interesting um my I realized a little while ago that I probably even predicted it because I did make the joke to a couple of my friends that um if there is a female doctor she should be played by um Olivia Wilde because Doctor 13 if you get that joke, well done. <laughs> so I kind of already predicted it, so um, yeah, I have, the only thing I've seen her in is the first season of Broadchurch. I, if I've seen her anything else, um, I can't think of it offhand. Um, but I'm looking forward to it, you know, it would be nice to have a change and, and sort of mix it up a little bit. And as other people have said, um, it's regenerated their, ah, no pun intended, but it has regenerated their interest in the show to have this really big shake up. To have something really different um uh but yeah overall i liked it. it i think it was a very solid story it wasn't a huge story so it wasn't overly filled um i think keeping the cast smaller um helped that um it made a very human story um and oh i was gonna say about um david bradley's performance because he is regenerating i don't know if this is an acting choice by bradley I haven't seen a lot of, like I said, I haven't seen Tenth Doctor, I've seen quite a few First Doctor stories, but not for a while. But he's doing a weird kind of staccato um, speech patterning that kind of reminded me of the Monda Cyberman. Um, he, they just, he kind of sounded a bit, a bit Cyberman-ish. And well, that's a, yeah, that's a kind of fun parallel that um, they're both regenerating after their um, Cyberman episodes. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing, and it wasn't every line, but there were a few moments, and I'm not sure if he's trying to do like the old man, the you know, the dying man, or what, but a couple of times it did sound like a little bit like a Cyberman, uh, and, um, sorry, and that kind of was mildly distracting, but it was only a couple of moments, so I, I don't know if it was a weird acting choice or just the way the line was delivered, but, um, yeah, a uh, solid episode, um, everyone did a great job, um, I've always liked my guess in the, as an actor anyway. Um, yeah, you, you enjoyed watching your uh, brother being all brave and captain, didn't you? Yeah, so there we go. Um, yeah, I can't, I don't give things ratings, but 
I would I recommend it if you haven't been seeing Mr. Capaldi's era? Maybe, I don't know. It's it's up to you. Um but it is a nice send-off. It's got some really lovely moments. If you want to see Gattis doing a really good performance and sort of really kind of bringing some, some interesting stuff to his um, legacy, then yeah, definitely watch it. If you want to see an interesting multi-doctor story, definitely watch it. Um, if you want to say that you were there for when the Doctor became a woman for the first time, then you've already seen it. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're one of these people who taped it or maybe watch it later or want to see what people's reactions are, it's good. It's... Is it the best? Is it the most exciting episode I've seen? No, there's probably others that will rank higher than it. But uh, in terms of itself, it's good, it's solid, it tells the story it wants to tell, it doesn't tell it too big. It keeps everything small and with the characters um, that it wants to tell it with. So yeah, um, small cast as a bonus, small story, quite enjoyable, really gut punch ending, um, and uh, really cool regeneration sequence. So yeah, I liked it. Cool. Uh, well, anyway, I have been Michelle. I can't find my bit of paper by following. Is it? Is it that it? Yes, that's it. So yeah, I've been Michelle. Please feel free to follow me at Phoenix Level on Twitter or just normal Phoenix Level on Tumblr. Um, like, share, subscribe, comments. Comments are always good. I like comments. Um, but yeah, uh, that was my thoughts on the latest Doctor Who. The next one's not going to be till I think autumn next year, autumn 2018. That's the the rumour, I'm not sure what's been confirmed yet, but definitely not. Unless there's going to be a special in April that um, I've missed the news on. Yeah, it looks like we've got a long old wait. So um, that'll be fun. Alright guys, like I said, uh, Merry Christmas, and I will catch you guys later. Bye!